So when it comes to being a forex trader, it's very important to use the right kind of trading platforms. And it's also very important for you to use a trading platform that's very easy and very straightforward to use. And one of the trading platforms that's very commonly used by a lot of retail traders out there is the MetaTrader 4 trading platform. And this platform is also offered by a lot of brokers out there in your Android or your iPhone. You just need to download the MT4 app that looks something like this, okay, with this icon. Then in order for you to choose your broker, you just need to go inside, open an account. Then from there, you type in your broker's name, then it will come out from there, okay. Meaning that if you decide to change broker, you don't need to re-download that app again. That's the good thing about MetaTrader 4. But for a laptop, it will be a little bit different because if you do change your broker, you might need to download another trading platform, which is also MT4. So when it comes to the MT4 platform, it's a trading platform that is commonly used by traders and brokers. The MT4 provides you with two types of orders that you can use to execute your trades. But then order aside, I'm going to show you step by step how do you use the MT4 platform, how do you navigate it, and how do you use it properly. So when you first downloaded your MT4 terminal on your laptop, okay, it will look something like this when you first launch it. So there are a couple of many many different functions that you need to take note of, but I'm going to just show you the ones that are more important. The first thing that you notice is that when you launch this platform, this is the trading chart. And if you zoom in, okay, this is the zoom in button. This is your bar charts. And then in order to zoom out, you can press this button, okay, to look at the longer term trend. And of course, right now you already know that there are different types of charts that you can use. One of them which is bar charts, and then the other one is candlestick. So if you want to change to candlestick, just click on this one. Then you'll be changed to candlesticks, okay. And another one of course is the line chart. Okay, if you click on it, then you can see the line chart like that, alright? But personally for me, by now you already know that I use candlesticks most of the time. And this is my favorite chart of all time. Okay, so in order to look at the different currency pairs, the first thing you need to do is to go to Market Watch or press Ctrl M. Then when you press on it, you see this. So the first column right here, you see the different types of currency pairs, the different symbols, and then you see the bid price, because now it's weekend, that's why the prices are not moving. Then you see the ask price, then this one is actually your spread, okay, it's your spread. So if you look at this, it's not really 41 pips, it's actually 4.1 pips. But normally on weekdays, the spread will be a lot lower, will be totally below 2 pips, okay. Because 4 pips for Euro dollar is a little bit too high. But anyway, you see the price high and also you see the price low. Okay, so this is the market watch section over here. You can monitor the spread so you don't need to calculate it manually yourself. And then if you want to open another chart, let's say for dollar yen, okay? All you need to do is just go to dollar yen right here. Right click, chart window. Press on it, then you see the dollar yen chart. Okay, then change it to candlestick. Then same for the rest of the currency pairs. Another way that you can open a new chart is to go to create a new chart right here. All the way to the left. Then you just click on the currency that you want to open. Okay, and then you see the pound dollar chart being shown over here. Then the other important thing that you need to take note of is the terminal. Now what is the terminal? All you need to do is just go here, click on terminal or control T. Then you'll see this row pop up right below. And what is this section right here? So when you have an open trade, your trades would be shown over here. Right now I don't have any open trades, this is a new demo account by the way. And once you have a closed trade, whether it is winning or losing trade, it will be shown right here in account history. Okay, it will be shown under your balance. Then this section right here would be the news. But personally, I don't monitor using this section because 
I would monitor using other websites, which I'm going to talk about in the next few sections. But for now, mostly I would just focus on my trades and then the account history. Okay? And then the other thing that you need to take note of is the order button when you want to make a buy or a sell. So when you want to open a new order, you just go to new order right here or you press F9. So when you press this new order button, you'll see a couple of things. Number one is the symbol. Okay, make sure you choose the right currency pair that you want to trade. You don't want to pick the wrong currency pair and then only to buy into a wrong kind of currency pair then you can't get out then it's going to cause a lot of problems. Okay, make sure you pick the right currency pair. Let's say I want to trade Euro dollar. And this is my lot size. Okay, when you pick one, it represents one standard lot. Okay. Regarding the lot size, I'm going to talk more about this later on in the next few sections. So don't worry about that. Now, of course, buying and selling is the easy thing. The hard part is determining where to put your stop loss and where to put your target price. So this section right here is where you put your target price. And this section right here is where you put your stop loss. Make sure you insert this in and insert this number in before you press the buy or sell button. Of course, you can buy or sell without even setting your stop loss or take profit. But I wouldn't recommend that because our emotions will start to come in when we click the buy or sell button. And you don't want to let your emotions determine where you put your TP and where you put your stop loss. And then for this area right here is your type of order. Whether you want to open your trade right now at the spot price or you want to open the trade later on using a pending order. Okay, okay so that is the buy and sell order. And the other thing that you need to take note of is the time frame that you are trading at. If you look at this section right here, this is the one minute time frame. When you click on it, like change to candlestick, one candle represents one minute. So it means that one, two, three, four, five, this whole entire section here would be five minutes. Okay? So if you let's say change to the hourly time frame, one candlestick would represent one hour. So from here, one, two, three, four would be total four hours. Okay. Then of course, same thing. If you change to four hourly time frame, one candlestick would represent four hours. Meaning, let's say from here, this candle to this candle, in total would be twelve hours. If you realize right here, there are a couple of buttons that you also need to take note of. This one right here is the cross hair. What's the function of cross hair? When you press on it and you drag, okay, hold your mouse, drag. You see that on the left side, all the way to the left, it says 1. It just means that from here to here, the difference is only one candlestick. So you see, if I drag it to here, the difference is two candlesticks. Right? It's just the number of candlesticks. But for the middle number, you see 1090. What does that represent? It represents 109 pips. And for euro dollar, remember, we need to look at four decimal places. Okay? So we ignore the last number. We just look at 109. If I drag it all the way upwards right now, it is 173.5. Pips. Okay? We ignore the last number. Then the number that is on the right side, 1.34904. Okay? It is a price at this particular level. So if you go to here, you see a vertical line. Now, normally, what do I use the vertical line for? What I use it for is that if I want to shift in between two time frames, I would use the vertical line. Let's say if I trade in H1. Okay, I want to see whether this candle is it on an uptrend or a downtrend. So if I shift to H4, you realize that the purple line is still here. Because sometimes the candlestick in H1 is in a downtrend. 
and then the candlestick in H4 is in the uptrend. So I want to determine that using this vertical line. Okay, so let me give you an example. So let's say today, I want to determine whether this candle is on an uptrend or at a downtrend. Is it below 100 SMA or above 100 SMA? Okay, so in the H1 time frame, you realize that this candlestick, it is below 100 SMA. But when I shift to H4, you realize that, hey, this candlestick is actually above 100 SMA in the H4 time frame. So when they are conflicting the stages right here, one on the downtrend, one on the uptrend, I would take more caution. And probably I wouldn't make a trade at all in this case. But that's on a side note. Okay, right now if you look at the next line, this one is the horizontal line. This is where you use it to draw your support and resistance line. Alright? And then right here is the trend line where you can use it to draw your trend line and see if there's any breakout. Then of course another tool that a lot of people use is the Fibonacci retracement. Okay? So I realized another thing is that this chart is a little bit cluttered because of the grid lines. So in order to change the color interface of this chart, all you need to do is just come here and right click. And then go to properties. Then you can actually change the color of your background. Okay, let's say I'm gonna change it to gray color, for example. Then the foreground is actually the color of these numbers right here. Okay, the price and the date. Change your black. Then for the bar up, bar down, it is actually the outline of the candle. Okay, you see? It's just the outline. The color of the tick and the color of the outline. Then the bull bear candle is the color within your candlestick. Bull candle, let's say white, bear candle, I'll put it black. That because you have the color of your ass line. Okay, so you see that it's a lot clearer when you change the color. You don't have to follow mine, you can just make any color you want because some people use green and red for their candlesticks also. Okay, so let's just stick with green and red. And then when you go to this tab right here at common, you can see that this area right here, you can change a couple of settings. So what I normally do is that I wouldn't have the grid and I'll show period separators. Then of course right here you can also pick the type chart that you want. Okay, we press enter. Then you see that the chart right now is a lot clearer. Now you realize that this line right here, what is this all about? This one here is the period separator. Now the period separator basically just tells you that this right here is one day. And this right here is another day. Within that column is one day. Then another column represents another day. Then another column represents another day. This is only for H1 time frame. Because when you switch to H4 time frame, one column actually represents one week. From here onwards is Monday. Then ends here on Friday. Okay? But you switch to H1, from here it is in the morning. Then about here is night time, then early morning. 